think we're all ready. Hello. Welcome. Welcome everyone to day three. Uh, I apologize for running a little bit behind today. In true fashion, <laughs> in true fashion, I was um, thinking I could do a lot more than I could. <laughs> and I got stuck um, ordering the wrong thing at Starbucks, trying to get something for my kids. And, you know, it's just true fashion of how it all goes. Ah! Sorry, Facebook. I just killed the Facebook people. I apologize. Whoa. Whoa, excitement. Okay. Hold on. Give me one second. Uh, sorry, it's all moving around, guys, on Facebook. My phone's not behaving today. Can, is this going to work? Okay, there we go. Okay. <sighs> welcome, welcome to day three. Our final day, our final day for this three-day master class. We are stepping in to our power today. Right? This is the, the upper level of our foundation, of our strength, and the power behind our expansion. Hello! So I encourage you guys, as you're jumping on, say hello. Let me know where you're joining me from. Let me know if you're watching on the replay. Um, if you're watching live, I love hearing you guys. If you've been following along on the last two days, welcome, welcome, welcome back for day three. If this is your first or you've only done two, no worries. I'm going to be actually posting the links to all the days too, so you can go back at any time uh, and dive again into the different days. So... Uh, we are in the navel today. We're in the navel today. I'm going to try back up so that I can kind of look in the middle. So I'm looking at both screens here. So our navel center, we've talked about our root. We've talked about our sacral. And today we're talking about and we're connecting into our navel. Now, our navel center is the place of our power, of our fire, right? This is the center that connects us to our will, our ability to take our essence created in our root, our creativity and connection to divine expression and actually begin to manifest it into the world. Also, your navel center is the housing of the fire, your drive, and therefore also your anger. This is where you hold your anger. So I like to check in with people too and say, do you have food intolerances, IBS, things uh, of that nature, upset stomachs, things like that, most likely you're holding overwhelm or repressed anger here. Your fire has gotten, um, there's no place for the fire to go, so it is turned inward, right? Remember we have the fear that it can be held at the lowest, our root, your often guilt and shame it can be connected at the womb. Anger is at the navel center. Now, one of the big things with people that I work with, with clients, with women especially, um, especially I want to point out too, especially women of color are told to not be angry. Or they are told that they are angry when they're not, when they're just standing in their power. And this can lead to a lot of programming that anger is bad, that I can't seem angry, that you silence yourself, that you give away your power, that you um, don't connect to your strength because you're shamed. You're told not to have boundaries. 
you're told to not to stand in your power because it is seen in this negative light. Now your anger and your fire is what drives you. It's what gives you the notice when you care about something, when a boundary that you feel or have created is set and has been crossed, right? So importantly, how you connect to your anger and we're different. So if you know Enneagram, uh, this is one of those charts, one of those systems that I use with, with my clients when I do rising soul matrices, things like that. It's one of the things I teach in the Rooted to Rise program. I teach you all about the Enneagram, how it works and how it can empower you and everyone around you. But we look at, right, this is that, you know, system that I mentioned day one that talks about your root childhood messages. I may or may not have talked about that, but it's where you can hear your, what message that you miss as a child and your inner child needs to hear. But it also tells you how when you're under stress, you respond, how you utilize. This is one of its other benefits. It has a lot. This is one of them. So you have different people. This is very important. Also, different people respond to stress differently. Right? We have people, and this is often developed in childhood. You're, you start cementing in that root phase period. Uh, how you have been ex not told per se, but how you have interpreted through experiences. And this doesn't mean um, I had trauma and therefore I experienced this way, right? Because you can have had the most ideal childhood and you're going to develop one of these messages, right? Or one of these patterns. And each number, there are nine, are as beautiful and colorful as a rainbow. It's very... Um, it's connected to your um, your star chart really does feed into this. Your um, I work with nine star key, your metal and energy, your, you know, energy, your elemental energy that you come into this life, your soul comes in with also flavors this like a very good example. My husband is uh, what in Enneagram we call seven wing eight. And then one of my clients is also a seven wing eight, but she's an eight earth. She's a mountain, the earth, eight earth. And he is a three tree. Very, very different expressions of this seven wing eight, this realist energy, right? Where you have someone like me who is uh, a two that has the strength of a two wing three that has the strength of six metal. And don't worry if, if you're, it's, I'm starting to maybe overwhelm you. I just want to show you guys how um, the millions of colors in the world can be shown, even though they are quote nine, right? Nine ways. But these are the big overarching themes. So one of these things is under stress, you respond a certain way. You move away, you move towards or um, you fall asleep to your anger, right? So some people have been conditioned to just mute it. And I know in, in my group, when I had posted, we had a lot of nines. Nines, you have been told that you just have to kind of go along with it, whatever anybody else, right? Your, your own fire. So you've, you've fallen asleep to your own fire often. You have things like twos, people who are more um, what are called dependent stances. We move towards people, things like that. Twos, for an example, we are very weak on boundaries. Because we care so much for others, we give so much. That is our a driving force is fulfilling this idea that to be needed, we must do. We really honestly do care. And, and I say we, because I'm a two. We really do care about everyone around us, honestly. But that can lead us to have very weak boundaries. And so when those boundaries get crossed, we can become angry. Because we've, we've pushed away from the anger and the boundaries and the standing in that, right? And then those lines get crossed and we 
<laughs> right? You have numbers like sevens and eights that move towards. They're what we often call an aggressive stance. They move towards the anger, right? And so each number, because that's a goal, they're not afraid to back away. So each of these areas have a different way of having to process this center, right? So I invite you to start exploring that if you've never, how do you connect your anger? Do you use it as the fuel and you move towards it? Right? So like an example, my husband is one of those who moves towards his, his energy, his whole makeup, right? He uses it. So the anger comes out and then it's gone. Do you try to move away from it? Right? But by moving away from it, you don't necessarily address it. And then it just comes out when it comes out. <clears throat> or do you fall asleep to it? Do you like to pretend that it's not there? And you just don't get angry. Which isn't always true. Because everyone gets angry. So just exploring for yourself. And exploring because sometimes we're not actually even aware that we're doing these things. So today, as you can see, the different centers built. They built. They built on your expression, your experience, your processing. And they're important because this foundation helps you begin to witness, honor, and flow with your unique experience in this material world. And it is how you honor, experience, and flow with how you can manifest to the best and optimal experience in this life. This is one of those ways, right? is really getting to know all these. So of course the basics, the navel center, that yellow energy I mentioned yesterday, this is where your positive mind, this, the positive mind at its best can see expanded unlimited potential. Whoa, let's do this. This looks like it could be so much fun. We're gonna do all of this, everything can happen. At its most imbalanced, when out of control, it becomes this naive energy that can cause harm. Oh my gosh, I'm totally gonna cross that road today. Ah, there's not gonna be any cars, cars are coming, it's fine, it looks open. Right? And this anger and how you process the fire in life resides here. This is where your sovereignty resides. And this is where your passion, but not in the way of the, the sacral passion, that joy and creativity, the pleasure, the passion, but where your, um, that fire for life, right? This is how you take that. If you think of your sacral as the embers, the start, the smoldering flames, the navel is the fire that ignites you. Okay. So now imagine too, you have to think about your earth. Your root is like the wood. If the wood ha is rotted or wet, it's not ideal. You don't have a lot of it, right? If there's issues in the wood, you don't have that fire starter. Or maybe you have the fire starter, but you have issues with the wood. Maybe the wood is great, but the fire starter, that sacral, isn't there. The flames won't work. Maybe you have a lot of flames, but you're out of control with the other, right? Do you see how this all begins to build? Is this making sense to you guys? How this foundation is really a synergistic, ooh, look at me, my, my big words, synergistic building and, um, experience that's constantly flowing and changing, right? Because there may be a situation that triggers a certain thing 
where there may be a trauma experience. And trauma can be everyday stressors that just build, that can trigger, right? This is making sense to everybody. You guys there? <laughs> Y'all are very quiet today. <laughs> okay. Y'all are very quiet. So one of the things too that I want to point out is you may notice that I'm wearing red today, even though we're talking about yellow, about the sacral. And this is because I wanted to point out too, fire for, especially for certain energy types can be really important. So for example, I'm a, what's called a six metal, which is great for leadership and strength, right? That's, that's a very energy that I came into this life. I'm also a, um, I have like very Taurus in my chart. That's where my North node is. That's where I'm going, right? Which is very organized and very go slow, steady. I need fire to help make me more malleable. Now for others, the red won't necessarily be fire. The red also can be abundance and good luck, right? Fire, but also helping to make sure that your root is stable. There's all sorts of things, depending on your intention. So it's cool to pause too, as you go through these and say, where, what area of my foundation could maybe use some support today? Maybe that grounding mixed with some fire. Maybe that passionate, playful. Maybe just that bright and sunny. When I need real big uplifting, I bring yellow flowers. I bring citruses in. I bring bright colors in, right? Help with that navel center strength. Now, something else for us to be conscious of too is something that I've noticed over the years too, for those of you who have given birth at some point in your life, physically given birth, be it cesarean, be it vaginal, be it, you know, whatever, that the navel center, the strength of those muscles, or if you've had surgery, or if you've had something where the navel center, the muscles around your navel are weaker, but I find that giving birth because it manually really stretches, right? This can affect your navel center's power because your navel, that strength of your abdominal walls and things like that is connected to this energy center. So something to consider for yourself too, right? And one of the ways that you can help strengthen this center is to focus on toning your abdominals. Very simple. Ways that these kind of things all build in together and maybe you didn't think about it. So a great example of this is not having to do necessarily with birth, but when my second child was born, when, my, when Donnie was born, he had a um, herniated umbilical cord, his, his navel. His um, abdominal walls hadn't fully closed, which is not a big deal. It normally closes on, his, on their own. Um, but what that did was because the abdominals weren't fully closed, right, his, his umbilical cord and the muscles would kind of push through periodically when he was very, very young. And so being conscious of this, and it actually shows up, so this is something for you, maybe you don't have the herniated umbilical cord or something like that, right? Um, but explore that the strength at the navel, if you've had children, if you've had cesareans, things like that, um, and that toning maybe is a little less, how is your positive mind? How is your will? I found with him, this was a great um, visual. Yes. Amy says, all the surgeries can affect it. Yes. Anything, 
any surgery, any um, trauma, anything in your navel or abdominal wall, anything like that can affect the energy flow. Heck, piercing your navel can affect. I never knew that <laughs> until I had a holistic um, doctor tell me that every single person she had found who had a navel piercing had disrupted their energy flow because you have metal now running on that energy. It's very interesting. And then there was scar tissue. Just think about it. You know, that we don't often think about, we'll disconnect sometimes our physical form from our energy centers. Like we kind of are thinking, oh, I have this. If you've had anything, if you've had uh, your traumatic birth, that affects your, your creativity. That's wound. Any place there's scar tissues, that's wound. Any surgeries. Um, we're not talking about the heart up, but a great example of of how surgeries or illnesses can affect an energy center or the energy center is going off balance too as well. It can go both ways is in college um, where I actually, to be honest, I was really silent. I was shifting what my truth was. Actually, we were going through a really tumultuous time at, I'm so proud of my big words here, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> we're going through a really tumultuous time at my school, really intense time at my college where we were shifting from an all woman school to co-ed. And it started my junior year. And I also was shifting away from my circle of really close friends I had had for two years at this point. And I was drifting away from them. I was in uh, my undergrad. I had really settled and I was in the music field. I was, I was a singer, so I, like I knew how to use my voice, right? But I wasn't truthfully using my voice. I was silencing myself a lot. And it's taken a very long time to even pinpoint some of the places I silenced because it was so ingrained of how, because I was a polite Southern girl. I grew up in the South, if you guys didn't know. Um, my family was military. For my mom was in the military for most of my for like up until I was in fifth grade. So I was I was in Hawaii, I was in um, DC, and then I we kind of settled in um, Charleston, South Carolina. And I had for many years not fit, not my my voice, my expression, my truth was not acceptable. I was a bisexual woman who, well, I wasn't a full woman then. I well, I guess technically I was, who at one point was even dating a transgender. I had a long-term relationship with a transgender gentleman. Um, and we were very close. But I did not fit the mold. And I went to school and I again didn't fit a mold that I was trying to. And so what developed, and the reason I'm sharing this is by the time I got to my junior year. I got monohepatitis and then I had chronic tonsillitis. This was literally in the span of a full year back to back. Then I, once I got over that, I had chronic tonsillitis for months, for months until it was to the point that I had to schedule surgery and get my entire tonsils and adenoids taken out because I could not keep the infections away. And it would swell up so bad that I would have to be on antibiotics because it would be uncomfortable to swallow. I had to get them removed. And ever since, I have to be very conscious of my throat center. This will be the most sensitive spot. I have to do um, allergy healings because just because an area was taken away, this is important too, since we're on the topic of how surgeries can affect your energy centers, your body still has the phantom energy there. So I still have tonsils and adenoids often that I have to address, even though they physically are not there. My body energetically is still acting as if they're there. And there was a lot of trauma in there. They actually, when they took them out, they were like, how? Um, and I was very fortunate too. I happened to have 
being in Charleston, I happened to be able to go to one of the top specialists uh, for this surgery because as a singer, it could have completely destroyed my vocal folds and I could have, you know, it could have been gone. But this, I want you guys to think about this, to start exploring what surgeries, what experiences, what physical the ha is happening in your body. Angie is saying, I never thought giving birth could affect the solar energy. You have three children and hysterectomy. Yeah. Yeah. And I think part of that too is because it's a new way, right? We have to, we do give part of our power to our children when they're first born. If you guys don't know, if you've ever had children, your children are physically in your aura until three. They stay in your aura. You are sharing aura. So especially if you had multiple children that were both young, like I had when my second was born, my oldest was only two. So I had two beings in my aura at all times. So you wonder why women get birth. <laughs> we have a lot. It's a lot on our plate because you are supporting and holding the auric energy of your children. So that's a whole nother story. But yes, it really does affect so much. And when we start not thinking about our energy and our physical as separate, it changes everything. And this is why when I do Rooted to Rise, we address your physical, your emotional, your energetic um, all your mental body. It's why in that first month we have a, a, sh a chef who comes in, who also deals with energy and your whole energetic being. And we look at how food it's how I teach you guys. I actually bring in feng shui a little bit in month one, because your physical home, we talk about your physical experience. And we talk about in month two, your physical body, your self image, giving birth, your womb, trauma, right? All of this, because they're not separate, they are woven together. So thinking about building, right? If you've got that root, and you have childhood birth trauma, or you had trauma in your, in your womb, maybe you've had sexual assault, or maybe you just had an experience where you had a partner that did not treat you as a divine goddess being, Maybe you had birth trauma, giving birth. Maybe you've had a hormonal imbalance and had to deal with that. So much, right? There's so much that's all interwoven, all interwoven together, right? Uh, Lorraine said, I had um, both C-sections and natural plus tube side with clips. Didn't know it at the time. Yeah. And so this is, Lori mentions, and I still feel I share your aura. I would say, so this is another really important part. When you give birth, I know we're talking about the navel, but this is important for you guys. I want to address that. When you give birth, you actually can have holes in your auras and you can energetically, you're often energetically at the navel point, umbilically tied to your children. And it is good to actually cut those cords because you don't, you, um, I had this, I had to have this happen because I had created such strong umbilical cords to my kids, especially as a two. I was like, I have to care for them still. Right. But you are blood related. You will always be connected, but you don't have to be tied and giving and having energy being sucked out or drained, especially unintentionally, because often they, you know, they don't know. It is really good to cut these cords, any children, even if you didn't give birth to them, if they are yours, if those ties are probably there, to cut them, partners, cut them and release them. Doesn't mean that they are not gonna be in your lives anymore, unless they're not meant to. But it will mean that you call back your power. They, you give back their energy, right? And then you're standing as independent, sovereign beings, not codependent beings. Does that make sense? So if you haven't done a cord cutting for you and your children or you and your partners or just you in general, 
We're going to call back some of our power today. I encourage you to bring that to mind. Okay, cool. So I was going to have us do an anger release, but I think today we're going to do, I'm actually going to help you guys facilitate that. We're going to cut those cords today. Okay. In true fashion. The universe is shifting up what we need to do today. So we're going to do an energy cord cutting anywhere that we have given away our power today. Okay. We're going to start this process for you guys. And that includes, I encourage you to not be frightened because I know I was terrified the first time somebody told me to do this, that I was like, I'm going to cut the cords with my children. I'm a horrible mother. No, no, you're not. No, you're not. You're calling back your sovereignty so that you can put yourself first. Okay. So let's clear space. Let's kill our energy and let's get to it. Let's start calling back some of that power, okay? Because most likely over many lifetimes, many um, dimensions, and this lifetime, uh, you have created cords intentionally, unintentionally, um, and you've given away your power. And we're going to call that back for you at that Naval Center, okay? So everybody come into your space. Actually, I'm going to have you guys do... No, I am going to have you do a quick energy um, anger release as well. I am going to do that. Okay, so I'm going to, I think you guys need that. It won't. We won't do a long version. So if you've never worked with me um, and done an anger release, it helps to get out of your brain to have a physical experience, right? And even if you've done this once, it does not... Um, matter you can keep doing this right every time so when i put on the music when i tell you um and i will turn off my screen for those on the live or for those in zoom for facebook you guys are just going to have to have me watch while i hold the space <laughs> but what i want you to do is i want you to bring up to feel any place especially we're going to call those cords in we're going to see them and i want you to begin punching the air any place where you feel you felt anger, you felt your boundaries were crossed, you feel like your energy has been taken, any places that you felt um, your power was taken, I want you to let that anger, because the anger is what we often use as a first way to protect or to shroud the fact that we actually are grieving. We're grieving a loss, we're grieving our power being taken, we're grieving the fact we're powerless, we're sad that we're powerless, right? Or we felt like something was going on. And I want you to punch the air. We're not going to do it for very long today. Um, when I do this in full forms, we we do it for a decent amount of time to really allow the emotion unconscious that is sitting on you to come up and then release. And I don't want you to judge. Sometimes tears come, sometimes yelling comes, sometimes nothing comes, and that's okay. Don't shape this. Let it be. So we're going to clear our energy first, like we always do, call in our web grid. We're going to do this exercise very shortly, a short version today. Um, then we're going to do a cord cutting and calling back our power. And then I want you to, and then we're going to step into our power, okay? And then we're going to close out for the day, okay? And that's how we're going to end day three. So let's clear our space first. So in Divine Love and Light, calling in that, I'm going to actually call in Cleanse and Protect today. The Sacred Soul Alignment Cleanse and Protect. So in Divine Love and Light for each and everyone listening now and later, calling in Cleanse and Protect, clearing our space, protecting, putting that beautiful, healthy boundary up for us. Oh my God. Okay, let's ask permissions and activate the grid. Okay. Bring your awareness to the very land we sit upon. We ask permissions of the land and all benevolent stewards of this land today, grounding and supporting this work. We ask permissions of earth, all guides, guardians, and beings of earth and the ascended aspect of earth, asking permissions and blessings today. Thank you. Activating these points on your grid. 
We call to air, all guides, guardians, and beings of air, and the ascended aspect of air, all beings that are called to support us today, asking permissions and blessings. Activating these points now on our grid. We call to fire, all guides, guardians, and beings of fire, the ascended aspect of fire, all beings called to support this work today, cleansing and purifying us, activating these points on our grid. We ask permissions and blessings. Thank you. And we call to water, all guides, guardians, and beings of water, and the ascended aspect of water, and all beings to support the highest good of all and are called to support us in this work today. We ask permissions and blessings. Thank you. Bring your awareness to your ancestral point. If it's your first time joining us today, this is located beneath your earth star chakra. So you have your root at your center, your earth star, which is a foot or two below your feet. And then you have your ancestral point on your grid system, which connects you to your entire ancestral DNA lineage, right? And we call bringing awareness to this point, all healed ancestors. We don't want anybody with any of their shit here. We want all healed ancestors that are called to support us today in this work to call back our power, to purge and release any stored anger so that this fire may not consume us, but may drive us towards our expansion. We ask permissions and blessings and we light up this point on our grid bringing your awareness to your ascended master. There's a fly flying around here. That's your ancestors. If you didn't know, flies are often connected to abundance and your ancestors. <laughs> I, your ascended point on your grid. We call to all ascended masters, multidimensional, multigalactic beings, all ascended beings that are called to support us Today, we ask permissions and blessings. Thank you. Calling to your heart, anchoring here at your heart. We call in our higher selves to support us, to merge with us so we may anchor this grid. Calling in your higher self, setting that intention, calling that energy in the highest aspect of yourself that you are able to access today, welcoming them in. Thank you. And now I'm going to run our web grid activation alignment here, crystallizing this system for you so that it is a crystalline grid able to process and run even more energy than if you just had the single column of energy running. So in Divine Love and Light, calling in the web grid activation now for all those listening now and later. Beautiful. Now, bring your awareness to your heart space of this grid system. I want you to imagine from your heart, a beautiful cord running down through your feet, out through your earth star, out through your ancestral point on your grid, down through the earth. And we ask permissions to connect in with Gaia today, to ground this energy, to connect into her unconditional love and divine feminine energy. Just seeing that, you can imagine it, you can see it, you can feel it, or you can just set the intention that it is happening today. And connecting this cord in to her energy. I'll turn on some music for you guys. You guys don't have to hear the dogs. now opening and receiving the beautiful flow of her energy, allowing it to flow back up, up through your legs, up through your root, up through your sacral, up through your navel, clearing and cleansing as it goes till it reaches your heart and then proceeds 
flow completely out into all points of your grid, all the earth, air, fire, and water, and the ascended aspects. This massive grid system beginning to flow and circulate, clearing and cleansing. And now from your heart, as it fills and expands you, raising this line of energy now as well up, up through your heart, your throat, your third eye, your crown, up through your soul star, out to your ascended point on your grid system, connecting, empowering this grid. And then out, 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 as far as you can, as far as you can reach. Or maybe for you, it's not. Technically, sources are all around us, but sometimes it can help to visualize it as this point that goes up, past all the universes, past all the multiverses, to the very point of oneness, of primal source energy. The point when the universe was one, allowing yourself to connect in with gratitude to this point. And as you connect in, seeing, sensing, feeling, iridescent, beautiful, light of source, of being and nothingness flowing down, mixing with the beautiful light of Gaia, flowing down through your crown, your third eye, at your heart, expanding in a beautiful burst of energy out through all points on your grid, beginning to circulate, mixing and merging with your unique energy and the energy of Gaia, proceeding to flow down through your navel, your sacral, your roots, out through your feet, and connect down into Gaia again. And this cycle continues. You don't have to be aware of that, but it will the ever present flow from the earth up through your grid, up to source, and then from source back down. This is the manifesting experience of us incarnated in this world, in this moment. Inspiration comes from source is expressed out into the world through us and then is grounded into the earth to be reborn. Our energy is then expressed out, we are re-nourished, and then through that we connect to source and the process begins again. So now I want you to bring your awareness to your heart. Awareness to drift down through your navel. Explore, feel, sense, connect to your navel center. This is you, also, this part of yourself, if you're curious, is you from age 14 often. 21. This is really high school going into college is held here. Those are experiences. And I want you to see a beautiful, sparkling, golden door. And I want you to walk As you walk into this chamber, it is full of light. Maybe you see golden thrones or a golden throne. Maybe you can just sense power. Maybe it is ruby, whatever it is to you. Maybe you don't. And that's something to be aware of as well. I want you to experience this chamber. This is your power. This is the seat of your sovereignty. I want you to take an honest look at what is there. What do you see in this space? Do you see yourself sitting on the throne? This part of 
of you, your sovereign self. We want you to go up, up to this throne space. We want you to see if you can connect to your sovereign self, wherever she is in the space. Sometimes, not on the phone, and that's okay. And I want you to open and witness and give her permission to allow any place where her boundaries were crossed, her power was taken or given away, to come forward. Any place that it has been stored or repressed in your cells, in your bones, in the very marrow, in your lineage, in your ancestral patterns that you have enacted in a past life, anywhere that is ready to come up. And you together are going to help process and release this. So I'm going to put on music now in the next moment. I want you to begin punching the air. You don't have to visualize punching her in the chamber. <laughs> okay. And I just want you without thinking, right? You don't have to mentally say, I am doing this because. I want you to just allow and see what is coming. I want you to just sit with her now. <laughs> Divine love and light. I'm going to call in the sacred soul alignment. Sovereignty. Reclaiming your sovereignty here. I'm going to be calling back all your power. And I want you to visualize keys or balls of light or crowns, whatever it is for you, but I want you to see them flowing back to you. Okay. So calling this in now, divine love light, creator, change.
calling in the sacred light entity implant on portal clearing in the sacred light relationship healing resolving dissolving anywhere that we have ties cords attachments to anyone any place we are ready to dissolve these reclaiming our power returning these back to the original source with all gratitude but they're not ours anymore this includes all partners past present future all children all spouses all parents all co-workers all ancestral entities Clearing all of these now, dissolving and resolving all of these oath and contracts to allow these cords to be present, to dim your light. Calling that back now, dissolving this now. Good. And now I want you to begin to see this chamber filled with light the most brilliant and bright golden light you have ever seen. Radiating out from this throne space to the entire chamber is full of light, of your power. Encompassing both you and your sovereign self breaking any change shackles or remaining cords that are ready to be released i'm going to call in today an energetic allergy healing as well calling an energetic allergy healing for your navel center for your power hmm. You can be allergic to your power. You can have trauma at the navel center, at an experience where you stood in your power, and you can, can build up resistance to your own power. So let's resolve that now. <clears throat> to your stomach, to the energy of the world, experiences of overwhelm, being overwhelmed by the world, being overwhelmed by your own power or your own ability to shape the future, anywhere where you've taken on the belief that I cannot hold my power. That is too much for me. That my soul's path, my destiny is too much. Let's resolve all that now because it's not. So in divine love and light, creator, change it. Good. I want you to see this light begin to swirl around you, coming and coming into a condensed, beautiful ball right at this throne. So that the throne is now encased in light and your power. And I want you to merge with this other self, your sovereign self, and together sit on this throne. Feeling the strength, the power the sovereignty over your own life and destiny. Fill every cell and molecule, your entire grid system, down 10 generations back and forward. Now when you're ready, taking a deep breath in. And moving 
out of this space, leaving back out through this door, knowing that you are able to come back into this chamber at any point. You always have full access to this strength and power and sovereignty whenever you need it. Mm -hmm. Now moving back out, let's anchor all this in now, anchoring all of this energy into our hearts and our high hearts into our minds and our higher minds, into our cells, even our DNA. We give gratitude to our entire grid system, to the earth, air, fire, and water, to our holy healed ancestors and all ascended beings that have joined us today. When you're ready, taking a deep breath in, Exhaling it out. When you're ready, opening your eyes, coming back into your body. So that is our day three. I'd love to hear y'all's experiences. Let me know what you saw, what you felt, how this was for you today. This is the embodiment of everything. This is that third step. So in order to rise, we really dive in in, in month three to the fact, and this is important for you guys to know, that in standing in your power, you speak your truth. You claim your gifts. You connect out, you expand. So we really dive into all those things. We dive into your sacred sound, your authentic sound, your gifts and your radiance, your connection, right? Because we've done two uh, months of really good awareness, foundational support so that when we get to month three, you all are in a container, those who join me, of complete expansion where you're ready to really claim your truth and sovereignty so i hope you guys have enjoyed these three days if you really are called to this work called to really diving in to these three themes but on a massive scale so like a full month on each with a full um multiple hours a month of healing for each of these, right? So we did like maybe 15 minutes, but I do that in an hour, two hours every other week. That's part of it. Um, on top of teachings, master classes, weekend retreats, you build a, we build a container uh, so that you really can do the deep healing and the deep expansion so that when you emerge, you have a strong foundation and you are ready to embody your expansion. I have brought masterclass teachers in for this as well for a reason so that you have those extra tools. We have four amazing women. Um, so if you are called to do that, that registration is open. There are 10 more spots for this round. Uh, I am really excited to support. There are extended payment options, including I've kept the 12 month option open uh, for everyone who is interested. If that is calling to you and I cannot wait to do this work month three because month three I also go into what is your secret sauce we dive into essences we dive into what is your unique magic uh, we dive into all that what is your sovereignty look like because it looks like different what is your expansion what is your north node what is your Jupiter like what is your luck we go into all of that in month three. Um, we've done a lot of, we do a lot of child he healing in month one, a lot of grounding, a lot of rooting, a lot of ancestral work. Month two, we really find what is your joy um, so that you can s embrace. Uh, you get a 10 week manifestation course as a bonus on top of everything we're doing that's included uh, so that you can find your own unique flow. So. I'm really excited about this summer round 
of this program. It's three months uh, and then beyond. These are tools that are going to be there with you for the rest of your life. Um, so let me know. I'm going to post the links below for those who are called to really take that leap into embodying their expansion, their unique expansion, because we are all unique and we all have a beautiful mission here as women to radiate that light and expansion out into the world. Okay. Um, I want to see, so it really embedded. I hid my voice as protection. I mean, so this is, um, some of the comments I did what I had to in order to survive. Yes, Amy. Yes. So many times, especially we as women, um, we as women, we silence ourselves because it's not safe. That's a huge thing. We actually work to heal during this time. Anyone who works with me and my clients, we really work to heal that because we have silenced ourselves for too long and it's time to reclaim that power and expansion. And um, let's see, Lorraine says, thanks. I saw a lot of people's faces that punched them. That's okay. It's not, yeah, she said, people didn't think that I held anger, um, had quite the workout, <laughs> brain still seeing people and punching them. That's okay. Sometimes that's what it is. Sometimes we don't realize. I remember one of the first times I experienced the, uh, utilizing this as a tool. Uh, what came up was my great grandfather, who was a father figure to me, and I was punching and I was yelling and I was screaming at him. And I loved that man. Like he was like my father. Um, but he had passed away actually in a traumatic accident. And I didn't realize it, when it happened when I was in uh, fifth grade. So I didn't realize that I held so much anger because that young part of me didn't, um, I felt that I was angry that he left, right? So we can hold a lot of anger. That doesn't mean necessarily the person did anything wrong, but it can be this experience that that's how we process it. And that's okay. So yes, Lorraine, that is very traditional and very normal. Angie said, I hid myself and my voice to survive. Yeah, so many of us do. So many of us have. That's one of the reasons Sacred Sound is part of the Rooted to Rise program. It's a whole part that I bring in, um, bring in all my training to help you guys really connect back into that. So much love to you all. If you're joining me on the Zoom, you'll be getting the link if you're curious about joining the Rooted to Rise program as well in the emails with the replay. Also, you'll get the link with the replay um, in the next 24 hours of all the days. And if you're joining me on Facebook, I'll put that below for you guys as well. And then I'll post uh, the, the links for all the different days. So you guys have them in place, okay? Have a beautiful rest of your day, guys. And thank you so much for joining me for this uh, three-day journey or for the one if you just joined for one. Thanks, guys. Bye.